So I've just finished building these custom super nodes for NA10, and I think they're actually better than NA10's AI agents. Check this out. So number one, we're getting access to more memory. So you can see right here, the super agent has two memories, whereas NA10's AI agent only have one. Now this is important because sometimes we just need a basic simple memory, just like the one we have right here. And sometimes we need a more in-depth one for semantic search, which Zep can do absolutely fine as well. And then I have full MCP support via the super MCP node here. So I just click into the credentials. You can see all the MCP servers, which we can just put all into one node without having to create, you know, five, 10 different nodes and half of them not even working, which I had the problem with, with the actual previous MCP node that was built. This one is working with everything I've tested. Everything is working beautifully. So that's really, really good as well. And then over here, you can see I have super prompts. Now super prompts is connected via the chat model right here to our actual agent, but this is going to allow us to use several different system messages as well as several different large language models all from the one AI agent. Now, if we compare this to NA10's AI agent, we only have one memory. We have the MCP client, which only accepts server send event endpoints, which sucks because there's barely anything out there, unless you make them yourself, which you know I've done in the past as well. And then we also get access only to the model selector. Now, this is also pretty good, and it's, a, it's a, one of the new uh, features that NA10 has as well but it's still based on conditions where the one that I built over here is actually routed via a model, okay? So this means we actually have a little mini, small little model within the super prompts node right here, which is actually routing all our you know, queries to the particular system message that we wanna use at that given time. And I'll show you really quick how we can get this all configured. So we're gonna click on the settings right down here and you'll see community nodes. So we're just going to click on that. We're going to click on install a community node. And this is where you want to be putting in the actual community node that I've built here. So if I just go over here, I'm just going to copy this and I'll have it down in the description below as well. So it's a lot easier for you. And we can just literally paste it right in there. Click on, I understand the risk of installing unverified code from a public source. And we literally just click install. I'm not going to do it on this one because I already have it here, but that's how we get set up. And as soon as you got everything installed, if you just search up like super and you'll see the super agent, super prompt, super MCP, those will be available in your NA10 workflows as well. And I'll show you really quick how we can configure a few things here as well. So look at the one on the left right here. You can see the system message source. I have it set as use super agent system message. Now this is just a standard system message, just like on your standard AI agents for NA10. The difference here though, okay, is because we are utilizing this actual system message. Now, if I was using the super prompts node, okay, then I'd be wanting to click on the drop down menu here. And then I would click on route via super prompts. Now, the reason why that is, is because we wouldn't be utilizing the actual system message from here, okay? would be actually utilizing the system messages from here. But since I'm not utilizing super prompts on this particular super agent, I'm just going to click on use super agent system message, and this will actually use this system message right here, and then we're all clear. Now for the second one, as I just mentioned, you can see here that I have the use super agent system message or route via system prompts. So for this one, since I am using the super prompts node, I want to be clicking on route via super prompts. Now that's gonna disregard the system message from the super agent because all the system messages are then going to be from this right here. Now this is how we're gonna be utilizing and making these prompts as well. So we're gonna click on add system prompt. Now the label right here is just for us to know. So this is just so we know what this actual prompt is for. So we could just say something like poem. Now the when to use this prompt here is actually very, very important because this is the actual information that the router agent is gonna be reading to understand which prompt to route your query to. So in this case, let's say it was poems, right? Uh, we would just say something like, use this for queries related to making poems, okay? Now in the system prompt here, this is where you would just put your standard system prompt, your system message. So it'll be something like, you know, I won't write a full one here because it take me a little bit to write all that, but we could just say something like, uh, you are a poetic genius. <laughs> That's a nice simple one. And down here is just where we'd be adding in more. Okay. So we could say this one, it might be a coding one. And we could just say, use this for queries related to coding. 
you are a coding genius. Okay. Obviously, you know, expand a lot more than what I've just written here, but I hope you get the whole concept and point of what I'm trying to, you know, bring across here. Now, the router model that you see down here, I would suggest just leaving this as default. You can change model if you like. I've only added in GPT 4.1 mini and GPT 4.1 nano. The reason for that though is because these are both very, very cheap and very, very fast models. Now, mini is going to be more reliable than nano. Okay. But nano is going to be a lot, lot cheaper and even a lot faster than mini. Okay. So just keep it in mind. But mini in most cases, I would say is absolutely fine. And then we need to connect some large language models as well. So we're just going to click on the plus sign right here. And I'll just add in, you know, open AI just to make things a lot quicker. 4.1 mini. Sure. That's fine with me. And we'll add in, we can add an open router as well. It's absolutely fine. And we'll just put in, we won't do that again. We'll put Sonnet 4. There we go. Okay. So now we actually have our super agent here connecting to two different system prompts. Okay. I know these system prompts are extremely basic, um, but we're also connecting to two different models, but we're only utilizing one super agent here. Okay. So this is why I think it's really, really cool. All right. So let's test out some MCP servers here. So we can see I'm using the sequential thinking and let's think about the meaning of life. So we'll press enter there and we'll see this go through multiple um, iterations here because this is going to be going through a thought process. If you're not you know, aware of the sequential thinking and how it works, it goes through different thoughts until it ends and then comes up with the final conclusion. So we can see it going through several thoughts here. We can also see it going through ZEP. So the memory for ZEP is already stored. Our simple memory is also stored here. And I'll just open that up a little bit wider for you so you can see what's going on. And there you go. We also have the response from our actual agent. And let me just drag this a bit across. And then right here, you can see the sequential thinking MCP server being utilized. So we have right here, there are total thoughts of five. Um, this is thought number one. And then it was going through two, three, four, five, all the way to the end until it comes up with the final conclusion of why we exist on this world. Okay. Kind of. And the great thing here is we're actually utilizing simple memory as well as the ZEP memory at the same time. Now, do you have to use this combo of memories or do you have to use two or more memories? Not necessarily. It's totally up to you. The whole point here is that you can. Okay. And this will make your agents a lot more powerful as well. And I'm just changing the chat trigger to the super agent two right here. So we can try out super prompts. So right here, I'm just going to say write a 20 word poem because I think I had a poem system message in there and we should see it being routed to, well, in this case, it's going to be Claude for Sonnet, which is actually, you know, quite perfect because it is really good at writing. And let's test out the coding prompt as well. So it won't be using open router here. It should be using the open AI chat model. So let's just say, write a random 10 line JavaScript code. Send that up. There we go. And there we go. Okay. So we're utilizing different prompts. We're utilizing different large language models as well, all from the one super agent, which I think is really, really cool. It's going to be a lot of fun to explore, expand, you know, make our workflows a lot more powerful as well. And yeah, now for the super MCPs here, we can just click into this, go to the credentials. Okay. Now this is just going to be standard JSON format for adding MCP servers. So if you go pretty much literally anywhere, you know, to actually utilize MCP servers. Okay. This is generally going to be the format that you're going to be using. Now, just in terms of how to add the MCP service here as well, I'll show you how to add sequential thinking. So what we're looking for here is the NPX command, right? So we can see right here, we have the um, command M NPX and the arguments at the dash Y and then blah, 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 blah. Okay. So we're literally just going to copy all that and we'll jump back to our little thing over here and just assume, you know, there was nothing in there. And we would just paste that in and that's it. Okay. We are done. We now have sequential thinking connected, but how do I connect more and more and more MCP servers? Well, this is what you're going to do. I'll show you how to add another MCP server here as well. So this is context seven. You probably wouldn't use this in NA10, but just as an example, just so you can see. So we're just going to copy that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, uh, I want to add this MCP server. 
And I'm just going to say, add to this. And I'm going to go back to my NA10 instance, copy that. Uh, where the hell am I? Here I am. And paste that in. And essentially what that's going to give me now is just one whole JSON here. Okay, so not going to be separate. And let it run through. Oh, well, there you go. That's done. Copy that. Come over here. Paste that in. And there we go. We now have Context 7 as well as sequential thinking in the one little um, configuration right here. We can press save, come back. Now we can just, you know, give it a little test as well. Let's connect that up. I'll just use sequential thinking again just to make it simple, make it easy. And let it run through. Now you won't actually see the actual node being highlighted. Don't worry though. Um, it generally doesn't. Okay. But everything is working because you will actually see the responses working based on, you know, what the actual agent is doing right here as well. So you can see right here, um, this one is going through sequential thinking. We'll even test context seven. Uh, use context seven and get NA10 documentation for whatever. Okay, so we'll let that go through for a sec there as well. Okay, so where are we? Ooh, 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 okay. So here we go, context seven, title NA10, and it's just giving me a whole load of crap. Okay, but this is, you know, 100% correct. Um, and yeah, so there you go. You can see that everything is working absolutely fine. And that's how you're going to connect all your MCP servers as well. Now, feel free to use it. Have some fun with it. Tell me what you think down below as well. If you want to join the community and learn how to make these kind of things, because I will be putting out a course about this as well shortly, feel free to join. But if I don't see you there, hope to see you in the next video. Catch you then.